Christina Mikolos is a sports law barrister at Media and Entertainment Law Specialist, FRB, and Leon Edwards is managing director of doping control company, Versapac. They're both in central London. Good morning to you. If I can turn to you first, uh, Christina, what, in your opinion, is wrong with the situation for testing at the moment? Where are we going wrong? I don't think there's anything wrong with the, the testing as it is now. The problem is that drug-free sport, looking for drug-free sport is like looking for a unicorn with hen's teeth. You're never ever going to be able to completely eliminate people who cheat. And so the already, I don't know if, how many people realise how draconian the existing regulations are. Athletes who compete at elite level are subject to the most draconian of, of regulations. They have to be available for testing for a period of time every day. Um, if, if they're caught cheating, they lose their livelihood. Um, you know, most people don't work under these kind of conditions that if you do something wrong, even something accidentally wrong, you can be banned from your livelihood and your, your job for at the moment two, two years to four years. So do you think that it goes far enough at the, the present time that there's no need to take the testing procedure any further forward? Well, I, I think, yes, I think that's right, actually, because the, the, the problem, as I said, is that there, there will always be cheating. It's the nature of this kind of use of drugs that the people who are developing the drugs and those who want to use them will always be one step ahead of the testing methods. That's always going to be the case. Uh, currently, the existing limitation period is eight years, and, and these new changes are increasing it to ten. When I say limitation period, I mean the, the period of time from when... The, the doping violation occurs to uh, the point that you can effectively be prosecuted in inverted commas by the um, sporting authorities. So there's already quite a long period of time. Ian Edwards, do you think that's right, that the, the athletes that want to cheat will always do so and will always be one step ahead of, of the testing methods? I think there's certainly a, a, a point in that. The, the problem we face at the moment is the systematic uh, doping that goes on within sport is not matched by the testing program that we have and, and I understand Christina's point but what we need to do is prevent people and deter people from taking drugs in the first place that way we can build doping programs that uh, that mean we have clean sport for all. And so how will this, um, it's been termed biological profiling, how will that simply wipe out the cheats from, from athletics or from, from whatever sport is concerned? I think it does two things. Um, the profile in itself will allow different types of testing. So it will allow the scientists to understand markers within, uh, within the, the body, the genetics, uh, which can be tested at a point in time. We can also learn from that for future drugs that are available. But also, and importantly, it will allow people to understand more clearly that people are serious about this testing program and will act as a severe deterrent to drug taking. And the results to be held, uh, we believe, for, for 10 years. Um, Christina, do you think that that's too long, that perhaps things that are uh, illegal in the testing system um, at the moment or previously, that that situation might change and people might be caught out at a time when what they did take was in fact legal? No, I don't, I don't think it's too long. I mean. I the, the issue is really ensuring that athletes who are thinking about cheating are deterred from doing it. And, and if you're thinking today, oh, I might be able to get away with, with this method today because it's new and I know they can't test for it, the back of athletes' minds will be this, this question of whether they can be caught out for that. But the, I mean, the, the more interesting change really is this um, athlete's uh, biological passport, which has just been said, the, the way that works is a lot, of, a lot of, I say a lot of people, people who are minded to cheat, one way they can do that is by taking uh, performance enhancing drugs out of competition. So in their, their resting period, out of their, their sports competition period. What this new test does will monitor those incremental changes. So, for example, one, one potential way that, that athletes can cheat is by blood doping, where your, you, even your own blood can be put back into your body highly oxygenated. Now, the, you, it, normally you, know, you can't, it's very difficult to test for that, but the, the athlete's biological passport means, you know, if you test somebody on the 1st of January and they've got a certain level of um, blood oxygen transport rate, and then you test again 30 days later and 60 days later, and that's changed 
by tiny amounts, that will reveal this kind of, of cheating that's hard to detect. So the biological passport is something that would be a, a very big deterrent. And Leon Edwards, briefly, uh, how many more people do you think will be caught with this biological passport system? I think in the short term, I'm not sure we'll see too much of a change, but over the longer term, in the next few years, um, into the next decades, I think we'll see uh, a huge number um, who will be deterred and a huge number that will be caught as well. Okay, Leon Edwards and Christina Miklos, thank you both.